But anyways, welcome everybody. I'm your host, Get Good Fox, and this is State of Decay 2, the infestation update. Uh, we got one last test to do. One last test. And uh, we're going to... I I think I know the answer to it, but you know I'm going to try it out first. But um, after that, we are going to be done with this playthrough. Uh, Beard Logan says, I actually hooked up my PS2 to play Sims 2 Castaways. I remember playing the original Sims a long, long time ago. We got a problem over here. Could you folks help us out? Okay, so this character's tired. Oh, all right, so what we're going to do is uh, we are going to reinstall the I Haven can't device. Let that We've got bring one more last friends. thing I want to try. And then whether it works or fails, we are going to... That'll be the end of this playthrough. So hopefully the game will cooperate and actually generate what I need. Eh, let's just play Duncan. Everyone has their hero bonus, I believe. No, you don't. Okay, we'll play as Jaden. Jaden doesn't have his hero bonus. Let's see, what do we gotta activate anything? Yep, movie night. Let's go ahead and reinstall the Haven device. Yes, it's time to do this thing. Anyone else worried about all these fucking Z's in our backyard? Okay, so the objective right now is we're trying to see the different ways we can cheap shot the system to see like is there is there a weakness in Undead Labs programming that we can exploit in order to marginalize the siege mechanic? That is our objective, and I've got one more idea. So most of them, like, it okay. seems like Undead Labs has resolved the, the issue of why it's so easy the to just skip past sieges. Hold them back, damn it. What's my style? I'm an endurance character. That's fine. Now, every time we do reactivate the Haven device, we do have to go through the siege over and over and over again. Uh, some people have asked me, can I use the Haven device to farm sieges? You can, but it's not nearly as efficient. Because the Haven device siege is much longer. I think it's like five minutes long. It's like, yeah, it looks like it's about three minutes long. Yeah, I guess, I guess you could do it. It's okay. You could, you could probably do it. Like three minutes isn't the worst. It's pro it might be based on. Um, it could be based on your morale and building action speed, but if you can get it down to three minutes or less, it could be worth it. But eh. No Man's Sky. Yeah, I've been I've been told about No Man's Sky. All I remember is uh, apparently it had a. Um, it had a rough start. That's all I know about No Man's Sky. Long All says, hey, Fox, I just got my ninth Blood Plague Survivor last night. Wow. That is a lot of BPS characters. How long do, were you uh, farming for those characters? How long do we got left? Oh, we're almost done. About a minute and a half, and then it'll be set up. The Z's will be up our ass again any fucking minute now. Okay, there's our juggernaut. We always get one juggernaut. Oh man, right on him. Oh man, oh, there's another one here. Okay, I doubt we'll have any more juggernauts. We just knocked both of those out. The 
That big one's a fucking plague carrier. Okay, now that should take all of those guys out. And what you saw there was the Juggers blow. Destroy two Juggernauts, one each. If you want to get yourself your hand on some of these Juggers blows, all you got to do is go to the Independence Pack. Call in an independent supply drop. Then you can install it into any facility. I chose a storage room to the, gets you the fireworks crafting station, and then you can build them right here. Uh, it takes a moment to get the hang of the throwing, but if you get the hang of the throwing, blows up the juggernauts in a single grenade. So remember those juggers blows. Okay, so now that the Haven device is back up, what we gotta do is we gotta wait for another siege to manifest. Eh, I guess I'll patch myself up. We can also de-escalate. We don't need this much heavy equipment here. Okay, so we have, like I said, we have one more test to do. We need to see, we I want to see, can we skip a siege while the Haven device is up? I feel like the answer is no. Um, I don't know why it would work that way from the perspective of the game mechanics, but I have a feeling that it just won't matter. But we're going to try it anyways. Also, let me see. These are supposed to be active. Outpost 4 is not active. Outpost 6 is not active. We're supposed to be doing that in order to prevent the uh, the zombies from escaping. Yes, you do, it does you require a little freak. bit of practice on the technique. Uh, don't forget that you can lure, you can control the movement. Uh, you can lure the, the the juggernaut closer to you. Now that we have the Haven device up, we can just lure these guys in and they will... Sudoku! Yes, you can do that. Uh, so Heath Haim started practicing the throwing of the Juggers Plodes on the lower difficulty. You can absolutely do that because the uh, the Juggernauts, they don't really behave any differently between Green Zone and Lethal Zone. Like their attacks are a little different, obviously, because the Blood Juggernaut has a few extra things. But their um, their abilities are, the, the, the way they fight and their movements are about the same. So now we gotta play the waiting game. We're just gonna wait for, we gotta wait for the game to generate a siege. That is something that is relatively out of our control, unfortunately. Uh, he abandoned his ceremonial like bayonet. Okay, we'll give him a hand. What's the harm? Oh, it's right next door. Shake the damn thing off. So you left your ceremonial bayonet in 
A gas station. Interesting. I mean, there's a lot of things you can practice on Green Zone, to be totally honest. Like, for example, if you want to learn to fight ferals in melee combat, you can also do that in Green Zone. Oh, yes, Thomas. Really, zombies? No, we're gonna have to fight it out. Can't do it. I know a lot of you have a hard time staying home. And they aren't coming back. The sun is so shining. We're still here. There has to be something. I feel like the network is really trying to help everyone. I appreciate that. Oh my god. For every one we kill, one arrives. I don't want to go out like this. Is he getting owned by regular zombies? Getting owned by a single regular zombie. Okay, I think we're clear. Pretty sure this is the place. Fucking Z's are still close. Good to see you alive. Oh, wait, I actually have to locate it. What am I doing? I've tried to skip to the end, but no, we actually have to locate the item. Here it is. We got this. Better than winning the lottery. Hey, I found what you were looking oh, for. How about a ceremonial bayonet, Fantastic. buddy? I can't believe you're saying no. Oh, God. It's time for you to die. No, it's not time for me to die. <laughs> Fuck that. You thought it was time for me to die. Oh yes, go over there. Good idea. Good idea. Good idea, right? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, oh no. Oh no. This place is full of crap. One might say that he um, turn made a wrong turn at Albuquerque, so to speak, huh? I want that feral. That feral, like we we need to gain a little bit of standing. Well, now I get to keep his ceremonial bayonet. I mean, it's it's like, it's not my fault. I mean, he attacked me. I had to defend myself. He pulled a gun on me. I had to defend myself. I'm sure you guys understand. Let's see here. He says, I just did this mission. It's damn good bladed, but a notch below the bastard of Bella Woods. Yeah. My favorite bladed weapons are all bounty broker based, though. Like, I I'm a big fan of the, the ice pick X. Yeah, exactly, Nightshade. He was in the, he was, he needed to be talked to. That's the issue. Like, someone needed to explain to him 
that like it's not somebody needed to talk to that guy and explain to him why it's wrong for him to try to steal my ceremonial bayonet like if he wasn't he tried to steal from me if he wasn't trying to take my ceremonial bayonet then he'd still be alive I was just trying to show him how cool it was. I showed him how cool my ceremonial bayonet was and then he pulled a gun on me and tried to rob me. Bullets for a friend. You see me soon. Yeah, we could do that. I think we're okay on ammo. That's a relief. What about um? Oh, we could do a play. Yo, I need a supply drop ASAP. Don't worry, we're not gonna. Percy says you. that the grass cutter sword is her most prized possession. Yes, this the grass cutter sword is really good. It's crazy that it's just a um. It's just a, a, a pre-order bonus, too. Like, such a... You basically just get like, Oh, here, have one of the best blades in the game. Here, have it for Seriously, free. that's it? Yes, I like the Bowie Machete as well quite a bit, Logan. The Bowie Machete is probably the best common-bladed weapon in the game because it's got really good stats, and it's really not that hard to find. It's a fairly common weapon. There are some competing weapons, like the Parang is also pretty good. But, like, the thing is, the, the Bowie Machete is way more common than most weapons. Uh, Burnster says I can give you one if I if you like. Well, I actually pre-ordered the game from Microsoft as well, so I I also have access to the. Uh... Actually, let's just go back to here so we can pick up some ammo. Oh no 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 no! We got to get our our plague supplies. I actually have access to the grass cutter myself. Let me guess, it's a bajillion enemies again. I just want to get my... Let me see if I can just grab this stuff and go. Oh, it won't let me interact because the zombies are there. Oh, well. All right, let's see if we can get it. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, the zombies are blocking it. Oh, I just want my supplies. That's all I want are my supplies. Give me my supplies, that's all I want. So th that's one of the things that annoys me about State DK is that like you can't interact with objects if a zombie is nearby. I'm like, why not? Why not? Leave me alone. Okay, we got a bunch of stuff. Let's bring it up. Okay, so we're going to bring this stuff home, then we'll get some ammo, and we can drop it off at the next area. The wyvern from the bounty broker. Yeah, I know that one. That one's from the pawn shop pack because it's the it's the pack with all the kind of like 
replica, replica kind of like Chinese weapons and stuff. It's the one that's like the wavy looking sword. I know just the one you're talking about. Okay, I was worried I was going to crash into a bloater there, but we didn't, fortunately. Make sure you stow that shit, okay? Hey, how about you stay okay, throw these like in that. here. No need to getting sick. Let's go ahead and cure our infection level here. Oh, not that. Let's go ahead and just equip some of those. Then we can get our ammo. Beer, Sizzle. Welcome back to the show, good sir. There, looking good. Play guard supplies. It's just so good. Unbelievable. And now we can deliver this. Once again, we're just looking for stuff to do until we can test this final idea. I'm hoping that the game will cooperate within this stream. Because, like, sometimes the game is a little shy with the sieges. Sometimes the sieges come out real fast, and then sometimes the sieges do not. One thing we've been kind of unlucky with is, like, the game has really not been generating a lot of quests. That's something that I've been a bit dissatisfied with. Does arming the outpost cost fuel? It sure does. It costs fuel, ammo, and parts. I'll show you the cost when we get there. Oh, also, we need to continue manufacturing. I'll show you all the costs once we get there. One thing at a time, though, right? Casual Kirk says it's too bad that we don't get credit for bloater kills when they trip over and die, even if you're the one who clearly caused it. Yeah, that's true. You can get the attention of a bloater, and then you can just um, let it fall over. And clearly, you were the one who hey, in. resulted in it, in it tipping over. Uh, oh, let's give them the rucksack. Mardag, how's it going? Welcome to the show. You might be okay after all. All right, do we get a decent bonus? All Please right. give me something See good. Ya. Rooftop Congrats. Recon, what is up with alive. this? These are awful. Absolutely dreadful. Congrats. You're still alive. Hey, you're not dead. Well, we're shutting these guys. Oh, I can't. Zero. It was somebody else who got it. Interesting. Okay, so this is the price that it costs in order to activate a um, an outpost. You are going to be paying 75 parts, 3 ammo, and 2 fuel, and that is per outpost per day. So if you wanted to activate all six of these outposts, you would have to pay yeah, that times all it. of them or how times however many outposts you want to activate. Over here, we've got two outposts currently active. Um, we got this one here and that one there. So we're basically playing 150 parts, six ammo, and four fuel per day. So that's like one rucksack of ammo, one rucksack of fuel, and 75 parts per day. Which is the reason why I don't think that using outposts is the answer. I, I don't think that using outposts is a good solution to the infestation issue because they, they just cost too much. Yep, it is the second group we've gotten rooftop recon on. I kind of want to get rid of some of these guys. Let me see if that's actually possible. Uh, 
Um, we don't need the medics anymore. I think I'm going to get rid of the medics. The reason we don't need the medics anymore is because we have a better way to get medicine now. Over. That is true, Beer Sizzle, that the outposts, they do cost a lot. And um, the they, they don't kill the armored zombies. They basically just turn them into flaming armored zombies. From what I understand, that is not an intended behavior, though. And that Undead Labs do plan to eventually get rid of that. Good to see you. Come take a load off. That is a lot of medicine. We don't need it though. Nice We're gonna go ahead and just so we think close these guys out. On our team. You hear me? The zombies are literally spawning inside here after I close down this enclave. Like they are literally spawning in this in this building. The moment that I close down this enclave. That is crazy. Look at all these zombies. I need a break. Yeah. Let's take all his stuff hmm? and then we're going to get him out of here. What's up? This sucks, man, but you're getting the boot. I trust that you believe this is the right thing. Yeah, they literally just warped in. Like, that was crazy. Share the harvest. Dinner theater. Filtration services. Rooftop sniper. I don't care about rooftop sniper. Everything okay here? It's like one thing that doesn't make sense about outpost traps is, okay, if we have the ability to just create these outpost traps that are so effective that they kill all zombies in one hit, except for juggernauts, why is it that we can only put them at an outpost? Why, why can't we build them around our, our headquarters? Like, why can't we just build those exact same traps and put them around our home base. Uh, Long Haul says, the only good thing I see about this version of the bait is the extra cargo for vehicles. Yes, the extra cargo for vehicles is a nice quality of life improvement. Especially because there were some vehicles, it just didn't make sense well, for them to have so. such a small cargo capacity. What's going on, hun? Uh, ooh, I want all that fuel. New place to put it. I will buy the fuel. Do want. Uh, Mardak says, I worked my way up through the other difficulties and I'm starting on lethal. Any tips? Um, it's, it's, I kind of like, I'll be honest, I kind of hate the, the question. I'm starting to play on lethal zone. Any tips? And the reason I don't like the question is because it's a very complicated subject. Like lethal zone, there isn't like a single tip or even a single few tips that can just answer like, oh, how, you know, like, what are some ways you can do to beat lethal zone? It's a complex subject. Like, what I can say is that start with a character with hygiene, build a gym as soon as possible. Hi. I got a feeling you and, and me can do business. Why not? 
Five. Don't rile up the zombies. So, you ready to start dealing? But, like, that advice alone is, like... I don't think that's, like, enough advice to really guide people through it. Good to see you. I got a feeling you and me can do business. Why not? I do need building materials, actually. I got a feeling you and me can do These guys actually sold a lot of good stuff today. ring -a says he didn't get a notification. That's, like, honestly, the best thing to do is keep track of, uh, like, re remember I have a schedule, like, and I do adhere to the schedule. Sometimes I'm, like, ten minutes slow or so, but I do adhere to my schedule. Like, for example, um, here's the schedule right here. So the, um... What do you call it? The best thing to do is to take a look at the schedule to see like when I'm playing the game. Because, th for example, there are people who are actually just, they're here before I even start streaming. Like before I even push the button to start streaming, um, they are already here because they know, they know the schedule. And I, I, I don't hide the schedule. So you just saw the schedule, like this is the schedule on, um, this is the schedule on Discord. Well, over here, this is Twitter right here. This is Twitter. So on my Twitter page, it's the pinned tweet, the pinned tweet right here. You can see the schedule. Um, on my Facebook page, the Facebook page, it's the pinned post on Facebook. So like I don't I try to make the schedule as available as possible. And it's like, I try not to deviate from it as much as possible. I try to hold on to the schedule as much as possible. So, like, that is the, um, that is the best thing to do. Oh, we were going to get rid of these guys. No, 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 no. We're going to drop our stuff off first. So let's dump this stuff off. Okay, so for everybody just now coming in, we've got one last thing to test before this playthrough is done. I got one last idea. Our goal is to see what we can do to trip up the sieges. Uh, yeah, we can go a little further. I feel like I know the answer. I'll be honest. I feel like I already know the answer. Yes, I already tried the Haven device. We're actually going back to the Haven device. The Haven device is up right here. So we tried the Haven device. Oh, that feral just set himself on fire. Okay, this this should get us to our hero, hero our hero bonus. Nice. Okay, good. What's work schedule? Two labor, huh? That's a ton of labor. That means we don't need those other guys, though. Um, we're gonna get rid of these guys. Mysterious broadcast. And now we're just going to shut these guys down. <laughs> gimme, 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 gimme. And now we're going to kick her out. Uh, what we're doing right now is we are just getting... Well, the main thing I'm doing, actually, is we're just... I'm just trying to find something to do while we are waiting for a siege to hit. You just got voted off the fucking island, buddy. Well, if you really feel that Does way... Does bloater gas still kill a play guard fast? Yes, it's the, it is the fastest method. The fastest method that doesn't require some kind of, like, a very specific setup. Like, the best way to do... The best way to kill play guards on lethal zone is with... Bloater gas grenades and a pirate launcher. It takes three. Just got 
Testing positive. Dump this stuff out. Okay, we need more storage, so I'm just gonna... Ray Rega says you'd really have to run out of ideas if you name your kid Hotel. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe the name Hotel was originally somebody's name, and then it became synonymous with a, uh, a, a rentable domicile. Okay, we don't need lending a hand anymore. So, well, well, what would you give your children a name? Like, if you had a son or a daughter, what what would you name them? What, what name would you pick? Oh. Beer Sizzle says he would name his son Dick Balzer. You'd have to name him, like, Richard Balzer, and then Dick would be his nickname. What if your last name was Lodge? Lodge sounds like it could be a name. Lodge sounds like... I, I bet Lodge is a last name. What's okay, what do you on, got hun? for sale? Um, I'll take that and that. Hello there. And it's time it's to get rid of you guys. The Bush League and step up to the majors. Matt is the next on the chopping block. Hotel you just Lodge. Just off the fucking island, buddy. Well, if you really feel that way, then I'll go. I bet there is someone in the world named Hot Hotel Lodge. I bet someone in the world has that name. There, it's like, I bet somebody out of the, what, like 8 billion people in the world, somebody is named Hotel Lodge. Yeah, I, br I believe so. I was actually thinking the same thing, Ray Rega. I was thinking the same thing, where um, Bethesda had a a challenge where if you name your child Dovakin, you would get a lifetime supply of Bethesda games. And somebody did it. Somebody named their kid Dovakin, and therefore they have a lifetime supply of Bethesda games. I don't think it's worth it, considering... I mean, let's be honest. How often does Bethesda come out with a game? It's like... Okay, if you said a lifetime supply of Microsoft video games... Like, if you said... If you named your kid Dovakin and you would get every single Microsoft game ever to be published hitherto after, that might be worth it. Especially if it comes with consoles, maybe that would be worth it. They'd get every re-release of Skyrim. Yeah, what well, all like all like what like eleven versions of Skyrim? 
Oh, we gotta get rid of these guys too. There's so many bad circles. There, we have so many bad enclaves. Well, while we're going here, let's drop off. Uh, let's drop our rucksacks off. As I said before, we are waiting for a siege to hit. Yeah, it's on cooldown, unfortunately. 14 minutes. If I had to name my children, my father, I, I, basically, my family has, like, some ancient history. My family has this old tradition going all the way back to when they lived in Hungary that, um, the firstborn child of the family clan alternates names. So I would have to name... My son's name would have to be John. In order to follow the tradition. We can put that in. Good. And I'm pretty sure we can put that in. Now they don't they didn't say anything about daughters, so like if I could if I had to give my daughter a name. Then and, and so like there is no tradition back. there. I think I would name my daughter December. Let's get these guys out of here. And that means her nickname would be D. Hey, sexy. Uh, now we can play as whoever we want because... People are always grilling me about what skills should I choose in the game? <laughs> I can't, I'm not gonna lie. I really don't care about most skills. Uh, it's, it's not about what skills do I, it's more about are there any skills, like I, I could play this game without choosing any skills to be totally honest, but that's not a bad combo, I guess. That's actually a pretty optimal combo. Powerhouse scouting, endurance guns, that's actually pretty good cuisine. Okay, over here we'll do cuisine. Keep training. <laughs> oh man, ring a ding. Let's play as, um, I don't know who to play as. Let me throw some people in. I'm not one to die. Just Get myself checked out. Might not oh, be I'm sorry. Idea. I can't do that. We're running out of labor, I guess. Let's play as Chelsea. Save some fuel. Ready to get back on my feet. Sorry to be a burden. Um, here we go. Okay, so that person healed up. Let's put someone else in. I don't think I'm gonna get better without help. Oh, she must have resourcefulness. We're carrying a lot more than we need. Do you have close combat? Yes, you do. That's why. All right, so we are going to knock these guys out now. So we're waiting for these. Like, these two things are going to launch an attack on our base, but they're right now they're just kind of playing around. They're just taking their time. Too loud.
honestly, like, what I'm doing right now, these are some of my favorite parts of the game. Like, just kind of going around, kicking out these people out of the community, doing stuff like Like, this is some of my favorite parts of State of Decay, to be totally honest. Hard to believe we're just one step away from wiping out blood plague in our town. Oh, Bernsta with times five T1s. Thank you so much, Bernsta. They went to Mardag, Scooby Diz, Long Haul, Altered Bacon, and Riddy Riddits. Congratulations to everyone who received a T1, and thank you so much, Bernsta. Hey, what's up? Uh, yes, it will attack me with the Haven device yeah, installed. Sure. Um, that part we have already tested, so we already know that works. Um, but hey, th you. that's not what I want to try. I want to try what something else. else. I don't know. Ditch those guys? Join us? Let's get rid of him. What's happening? Abraham, more like Abragun. Yeah, we're asking you to leave. I'm sorry. I bet you're just loving this, aren't you? Drop this stuff off at our base, and then we can make sure we've kicked everyone out correctly. I got better. Keep the alternative. Liquid Courage with 100 bits. Thank you so much, good sir. If you miss, so uh, Juan Red says he missed some of the old episodes. Remember, if you've missed some of the old episodes, just scroll down here to Fox VODs, and all of the episodes will be uploaded here. So you can see all of the um, all of the beta episodes. I try to give them a different colored rim. They got episode titles. Make it as easy as possible for you to identify which video is which. Thank you, Juan Red, for the 100 bits, as well as the Beard Logan. Thank you so much, good sir. Thank you for supporting the Fox Republic. And Bernsta, too. Thank you, Miss Bernsta, once again. Boy, want the party? Yeah, over here. Wait, 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 wait a second. I forgot. Okay, I think we kicked out everyone who stinks. The only people remaining are either they haven't been promoted or they're actually good. Have we ha have we have we entered into a new season for Twitch yet? Cuz like I know there's more emojis in the hype train like are there have they actually increased it? Uh, so the Beast asks, what is my next playthrough of State of Decay going to be? That is a good question. Uh, a better question is, will there be any more State of Decay playthroughs? If you haven't seen last episode, I expressed that I'm very unhappy with State of Decay, and I'm, uh, I'm currently debating whether I want to continue supporting State of Decay. Like, right now, I am playing State of Decay for you guys, and that is it. Uh, okay. So we're meeting these guys now. Uh, I will take the ammo. Do I have 10,000 hours on this game? Pfft, no, no, no. I don't have 10,000 hours on any game except maybe World of Warcraft. Uh, 10, that's 10,000 hours is a lot of hours. I mean, like, 10,000 hours is like, that's like seven years of like, intense, like, intense, like, just like, basically like working a 40 hour a week job for like, seven years or something. Uh, yeah, hey, I have well you. beyond thousand. Let's make a deal here. All right. 
I have well beyond a thousand easy. Let's go ahead and call in another Plague Art supplies. Really use a supply drop here. We pay our debts. We're on it. Boom. Oh, when we got fuel. Oh, thank God. I love fuel. Oh, it's so good. Yes, exactly, Mears was like, um, 10,000 hours? I mean, like, it, there's a saying that you have not really mastered anything until you've done it for 10,000 hours. And it takes, like, probably, like, 7 to 10 years to get a to get 10, to get 10,000 hours on something. Red Liquid Courage says, a RimWorld playthrough, maybe. I'm thinking about streaming four games. I, I'm thinking about it. I haven't settled on it yet, but I'm thinking that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday might be the heavy streaming days. Um, and I might go to four games. Because I tried doing a little bit of editing on my stream days, and I found that I don't like it. Uh, I, fi I think the issue is that I like to do one thing at a time. I don't like doing a little bit of editing and a little bit of streaming. I think I like to just focus on one thing at a time. So I might just do heavy duty streaming on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I might do Deep Rock Galactic on Thursday because that's when the new, or maybe I'll just move one of the deep, maybe I'll do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. What about Generation Zero? Maybe, I got, I wanna do, um, for more survival games, I'm interested in Sons of the Forest. Sons of the Forest is a big one I'm interested in. Oh, look at those supplies going back up. Oh, I love to see it. I don't understand why it takes... Like, sometimes they attack relentlessly with their siege. Sometimes it's just like every 15 to 20 minutes a siege hits. And then look at this. We're, uh, we're, um, we're going on an hour and 10 minutes and no siege. Vermintide 2 is Twitch integrated. Really? That's interesting. Check 077. How is it going? Yeah, the main thing is time, especially because the main games that I get suggestions from, they are not short games. Like, Generation Zero is not a short game. Like, what I was told, Valheim, Valheim is not a short game. Like, a lot of people want to see, like, the games that they are very lengthy. Oops. Let's refuel. Mardex says, Valheim's good. Haven't tried the new update, though. Uh, our Discord actually has a community server in it. Um, if you go to the Discord and then you go to... Let me collapse all the categories. If you go to the Get Good Fox section, community servers... Uh, one of my friends here, Kayak, is a, a very trusted friend of mine. He um, he is hosting a Valheim server, and all the information is right here. So if you want to play Valheim on a persistent server, you got one right there. And I believe somebody wants to uh, donate a Seven Days to Die server as well, so I'm probably going to list that one. I'm thinking about hosting my own servers, but, you know, like, that's kind of a down-the-road thing. Like, the, uh, one of my goals is to, basically, it, the more the channel's profitability increases, the more I'll do stuff like that. Right now, though, I'm still recovering from my expenses. Those of you who remember the, um, I had to have my air conditioner replaced. 
you one does not re, one does not come back from an eight thousand dollar repair. One does not come back from an eight thousand dollar air conditioner replacement quickly. This isn't going to open. Too loud. Oh man, that stinks. Nothing useful here. That stinks, Toxic. Yep, my my AC. I mean, it, I'm not. It's okay that it broke because it was its time. You know, it it, it was an old AC unit, so I understand I why it something. broke. But oh, let's go ahead and get that going. The guy who installed it. The guy who installed it did an excellent job, though. He was a real, he was a real craftsman. Like, he wasn't just uh, a guy who, you know, knows HVAC, electricity, and whatnot. Like, he was clearly someone who's done carpentry and everything. Like, he, he did a really good job. Like, uh, he did a better job than the person who originally put the first air conditioner in. Oh, look. I found a thing. First on chat from Commander Moo. That's kind of a funny name. I think I found everything. <laughs> oh, feels chilly. It, it, yeah, I mean, I don't turn it down that low, but um, you know what it doesn't feel like? It doesn't feel like uh, 95 degrees in my house. Hey, you want to be a good neighbor and come help us out with this? Okay, we got a welcome to the party here. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's throw this crap in. Looking good. I don't understand why they're not beginning their attack. Like, the, the. I'm gonna go ahead and do a scouting, because I feel like some of the infestations have escaped. They do! They want food, you're right! We've been wanting food. Huh. What you guys got for sale? We don't need medicine because we can do way better with the play guard supplies. We can do way better. Also, we are burning through our money, so. I'm gonna go ahead, uh, we did get some stuff to scrap, so I'm gonna go ahead and install both of these. Um, just when he asks, what would be the red talent character I would get after the hacker? The answer is none of them. There's other, okay, maybe one other one. And even this one, I wouldn't get. The only other one I would probably get is um, the gut packer for the food reduction. But I would rather just get somebody with meal plan rather than a gut packer. Yeah, I hate living in a hot climate. Like, I do not, it's like, I mean, I've lived here all my life, but I do not, I do not like hot climates. I will say, yeah, am I adapted to hot weather? Yes. Like, when it's, like, over 100 degrees here, and um, when it's over 100 degrees here, I'm not going to say I'm happy about it, but I can just live with it. I can just deal with it, where other people are basically, like, dying. Ooh, a network trader. Yeah, that's worth a pat on the back. Let's see if we have anything to sell.
Not a whole lot, but, you know, we got something to sell. A lot of this stuff I don't want to sell because I just want to scrap it. Yeah, with hot weather, I mean, you can be completely naked in hot weather. Like, forget, like, only being able to strip down so much. Take it to the max. In hot weather, you could just be totally naked, and you could still be... You could still be uncomfortably hot. And we got a bloateroni. So this is why I do recommend getting hygiene, because as you can see right there, um, even though we got the bloateroni, um, I'm probably about 50% infected, and that's because of hygiene. Hello there. We're the network. We're here to help keep you in touch. We're the Maybe network. Maybe offer a helping hand. We is the network. Give me that. And that. I feel like a And now I'm broke. forget one of the most basic facilities for improving their quality of life. Oh, what's that, Lily? In my opinion, a kitchen is what turns a house into a home. Except it's garbage and you shouldn't listen to Lily. It's funny how hilarious, like, how, it's funny how bad the advice of the radio people are. Ooh, oversized mallet? I'll sell that. Later. 85 influence back. That makes it uh, a little bit of a small recovery there. Okay, so, oh, that's, this is the wrong vehicle. They better give me a siege. If you were telling, why won't they attack? I don't understand why they won't launch an attack. We'll put those in. Very nice. This is where I fucking belong. I can't let it's that It's like once you understand how to play the game, all of their advice is awful. Infestations are down to a tolerable level. Why? You can finally breathe again. What, what did we do to make infestations go down to a tolerable level? We did nothing. Okay, so both of my furnaces are installed. Good, good. That means we can start salvaging. So let's get scrapping. We don't need this many hiking backpacks. Uh, we're going to keep those. So over here, some of these are pretty valuable, but let's scrap the weapons we don't need. I kind of like a scrimmage stick, actually. Pipes can go. Police baton. Wooden bat, don't need it when we've got metal bat. Big old shovel, double bit axe, drive shaft, club, don't need it. Uh, competition mark three is actually pretty good. Micro dot. A lot of these are enhanced variations. Bladder. This weapon stinks, stinks. I don't need the fake A47. I'll hang on to those. Good, that brings us back up pretty nicely. Cure our existing blood plague level. No one else is infected. Turn that on. Turn oh, looks like we need to play Xbox. Is that a screamer? Ugh. I uh, thought you needed three red infestations. I don't think so. Um, I don't think we've even had three um, red pop infestations appear. And if we did, like, any of these could turn into one or, like, become one. It's not a, um, they, they, I don't know. They just don't want to do it. Maybe we can clear some of these out just for fun.
Why are they screaming? I'll be there in a flash. Thanks. Okay, let's. This has been this bug. This one is bugged out all the time. This infestation is always bugged. Okay, I think we got it this time, finally. Nice. I can't keep doing this. Materials for everyone. Are they inside? Yeah, come on out. Yeah, we cleared some of them out. Maybe maybe they just need a little room. Okay, let's do this. So what do we need? We need food and mats. Food. Oh, not, not that. I said mats. Food and mats. There we go. Okay, so we finished the Xbox tournament. Now we can keep auto-training. Our auto-training is looking really good. Our guys are leveling up very nicely. Powerhouse and resourcefulness. Yep, looking good. Let's go deliver this stuff. Once again, like we're just looking for stuff to do right now because we're waiting for the siege to spawn. I don't know what is delaying it. I don't know what determines when they are ready to launch their siege. Like we should bet we should have all the qualifications for a siege, but I don't know. Have I tried turning it off and on? Well, technically, we just loaded up this playthrough, so. Technically, we did turn it off and on. How do I manage my loot with an impaler? The few slots make me want to use a bigger car. Um, the answer is that once you have enough close calls, Basically, once you stop using the Impaler and your car keeps getting ripped apart by ferals, you will then say, you know what, I actually don't want the bigger loot capacity and I just want to own ferals. That's what'll happen. And then you'll realize that the grass is just always greener on the other side and you decide, like, instead of just seeing the grass being greener on the other side, you just accept that this is the safest way to do it. That's 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 how I deal with the uh, the loot for the impaler. Like that, that is the honest to god answer.
Okay, so you guys want materials. Special delivery. Much obliged. Be safe. Now we'll oh wait, what did we get from them? Share the did we just get share the harvest? That's good. There we go. Share the harvest. That's a good one. We should think about making an outpost here. Let's see what they give us. Take care, kid. Supply drop hey, stinks, so been? we don't want them. Gimme, 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 and hey, I will you recruit. Been? You're better than those guys. Join us instead. I'll take all of your stuff. Let me guess, these guys spawned in too as soon as I dropped the enclave. Gimme, That's gimme. Pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. You don't belong here. Please leave. How long do you think this place is gonna last without me? Good luck, Doc. Yeah, probably till the end of the stream. How long is this place gonna last without me? Probably till the end of the stream, because this is the final stream for this particular place. Satellite broadcast is done. Now we can bring this back. Uh, can I call anyone else in? Nine minutes. Welcome back, zombie killer. How goes it? I decided to finally buy my new uh, PC GPU. I placed an order for a RTX 4080. It'll be here on the 22nd. Well, it'll be at the place I got to drive down to and pick up on the 22nd. Four K streams incoming now. 4K streams are not a matter of a GPU. They are a matter of GPU, but they're really a matter of internet bandwidth. Like, uh, most streamers don't even... Technically, most streamers don't even stream at, um... 1080. Most people actually stream at 720. Because... Bandwidth is really rough. How much did the 4080 cost? $1,200. But here's, here's the way it does help. Even if I don't stream in 4K, if I play at 4K, you are still seeing a better image. Like, if if I... Imp basically, in the same way that if I improve the graphics of the game, it looks better on your end. If I stream in a higher resolution, even if I am uploading at 720, it will still look better. But the main reason I needed it was because uh, I am finally having some games where I cannot stream them effectively. Like the game, like for example, the first one was Halo. I could not stream Halo Infinite or even, uh, I couldn't even record Halo Infinite without having some serious problems because uh, my GPU was finally, uh, basically just wasn't keeping up. And um, I was able to play the game 
on my own. Like, I could play Halo Infinite, no problem. But once I started recording or streaming, that was too much. So I was like, well, you know, we're finally getting to that point where I do need the upgrade. And my, my current GPU, although it has served me very, very well, is, uh, you know, it, it is finally showing its age. What do I have right now? I have a, um, a GTX 1080 Ti. First time chat from Pizza Steve 137. He says, hello. Well, how's it going, Pizza Steve? I don't really want to upload in 4K either to YouTube because the amount of time it will take to render a 4K video is ridiculous. It'll probably take... It'll probably take... A two-hour stream in 4K will probably take six hours to render. Yep, the 1080 Ti is an old card, but it shows you how powerful they are. Like, this, what you're watching here, like this, for example, this game easily runs on, um... Like, everything is on the maximum difficulty except Shadows because of a glitch, but I could easily put that up to Ultra. But most games actually run just fine on the 1080 Ti. All, all these years later. Like, only recently have I not been able to play games at Ultra Graphics. That's why I don't expect, um... I don't expect to need to replace the 4080 for like maybe like 10 years or something. This is fine, no repairs needed, that's all good. Let me check base status. Looks like we can build more stuff. I mean, that's why it's kind of like, yeah, is, is the 4080 expensive? I wanted the 4090. I would have bought a 4090, but they were sold out. Uh, and it's like, is it expensive? Sure. But, like, that video card is going to be good for, like, 10 years, maybe more. And it's like, how much money is $1,200 in 10 years? It's it's not, it's like, it's not bad, especially considering that this is my business. Like, currently I'm a full-time content creator. Now, if I do move away from State of Decay 2, that may change because I will definitely take a hard hit to my, my finances if I stop creating content for State of Decay 2, as I may do. But um, I, I don't mind picking up a part-time job until I'm able to restabilize. Let's find... Uh, let's go loot something. I don't understand why the zombies will not attack. I hate driving. Like, um, my last job, I worked as a trainer in retail. Car flipped and the bloater got him. First death and lethal. Yep. Gotta be careful what you're driving. Gotta drive cautiously. This isn't going to open. I, I don't understand. I'm here to all... I'm just trying to get... I know what it is. I know what it is. No, no, I figured it out. I figured it out. The zombies know that after this siege, oh. I'm going to complete okay. this play. This playthrough will be done after this. And they're like, well, if we never send a siege, then the playthrough will never be done. Have I considered playing the game? I really hate the multiplayer of State of Decay. Like, I really hate the multiplayer on State of Decay. Like, I played the multiplayer... ...maybe like four or five times when the game first came out, and then I never touched it again. Like, the only stuff I play for multiplayer is Daybreak. Come <laughs> on. 
Let's try doing things the quiet way for a change. That should be good enough. I don't need to knock out the rest of them. Zombie alert. I still hear them. Very nice. Like right now I'm in um right now I'm in Brian Menard's seat. So like you may not know that two years Brian Menard made a very, very strong effort to distance himself from State of Decay. And um he was right. And uh, I should have done the same thing because he it, it took him about two years to successfully do it. And um, I should have been doing it myself. Like, that was a strategic error that he was able to successfully foresee and I did not. But that's kind of where I'm at right now. Hey. Mad Gerard 30, how's it going? Oh, I hear that. This is that classic State of Decay 1 music. Careful, still a few zombies here. Once again, I don't really care about any of the loot we're getting here. We're just looking for something to do while the game decides. You know, I might just restart the game. Maybe that's what I need to do. I don't understand why they won't send a siege. It should have happened a while ago. Like, we should be, like, on our, like, second or third siege by now. Normally, they attack very aggressively, and I don't understand what is stopping them. So I'm going to head back to base and... Uh, I'm gonna head back to base, and then I'm gonna reload the game and see if the, maybe maybe there's like a quest issue that's blocking them. Either way, once we get to our final ten minutes, I am gonna destroy the last play guard, and that'll be the end of this playthrough. Well, the play guard is doing its job. The play guard's job is to generate infestations. I should take the part of the last episode where I was like explaining my my um, disappointment with State of Decay. I don't want to make an I'm not going to make an announcement on YouTube. The only people who know that I am going to potentially drop all my support for State of Decay. The only people who are going to know this are the people in in Twitch. Because the people who watch me on Twitch are the people who have... Uh, the people in my Discord and the people in Twitch, they are the ones who have come to understand me, learn a bit about me. Like, they understand me better than uh, all of my other fans. So, like, uh, and I'm not going to explain it to them because they won't understand. Because they already don't under the, with the last ep with the last video I made about it, um, the the my criticisms of the update. There's already a you know like not a massive amount of people, but there's already a lot of people who they don't understand where I'm even coming from, and they don't understand because one they don't have the beta, so they're not there in person. They they can't like personally play the game. And then they make a lot of, like, really just obviously dumb assumptions. Like, well, maybe you don't like the update because you're bad at the game. Maybe you just suck at the game, etc. So it's like, that's obviously a stupid... Looks like a juggernaut. A anyone who, who has been watching my content on Twitch knows that it's not a skill issue.
It's not that simple, Red Cherry Panda. Remember, I've got to be able to pay the bills. So, like, I have to play games that people want to watch as well. Like, that's, it's it's literally my job. The, my, my, basically, what am I? I I'm not a prof People would say, well, you're a professional player of video games. I'm really a professional entertainer. That's what I really am. So my job is to entertain people. That's how I make my living. So I can't just play what I want. And that's because the truth is that very few people want to watch the games that I enjoy. And I understand that. Like, that doesn't, like, you know, like, sometimes you go, well, shucks. I wish people wanted to watch the games I enjoy, but it's just the truth. Because I've tried it. I've tried it many times. You know, I'd sneak in a few games I enjoy more. And I'm trying to find kind of a compromise. Okay, yep. let's see freak. if restarting will cause them to generate a siege. Well, it's a quest. It's a start. Let's go do Be that. So we've got seven minutes before I just launch the attack, and we are just going to destroy this last play guard. If they refuse to send a siege, then I'm just going to destroy it, and I'm going to call it. Because like, I, I don't want to do an entire another entire stream of just trying to get one siege to initiate. Hey, you throw is subscribing at T1. It is indeed the 12 month anniversary. Thank you so much for being a part of the Fox Republic. Hey, you throw. I mean, honestly, um, if you want prestige. The man to talk to is AU Throw. Like, if you want to get right down to it, AU Throw knows. Yeah, okay. AU Throw you. knows how to like unlock all the stuff. I mean, no pressure on AU Throw, but like, there are people in my Discord who know how to just unlock everything instantly. So you can just get ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine prestige and unlock all of your stuff instantly in one game. There are people who know how to do that. Yeah, that's another person who can do it. Like, Zombie Killer? A Zombie Killer knows the technique for just instantly instantly unlocking and maxing out everything in Daybreak. Like, he knows how to do it as well. Okay, so let me prepare for destroying these... Um, these play guards, cause like, or the last one, I'm just gonna, you know, blow it up real quick. In case it doesn't want to, I, I have my gun held to its head, so to speak. I am ready to detonate him. All right, we got four minutes and then I'm just gonna blow up the final play guard. If we don't get a siege in four minutes, I'm just gonna blow it up. What's funny is, like, this ep I'm having way more fun in this episode than a lot of the old episodes because now that the infestations have been contained, now that I can actually just talk with you guys and play, I, I enjoy it way more. Um, the beginning of this was a lot less enjoyable because, I, like I said, I just hate these, I hate this infestation update. <laughs> just absolutely detest it. And now that the infestations are no longer a problem, but the problem is that it's at, like, right at the end of the game because the thing that I have fun with in this game is playing the game and having a chance to chat with everybody, in, like just kind of shooting the bull with everybody in the chat room. I like kind of talking with people, answering people's questions, 
cracking jokes. Like that's that's what makes me enjoy State of Decay because God, I've played the game for going on five years. I've done basically like everything there is except for like extremely like wacky playthroughs like no vehicles, which is like I'm not trying to like I'm not trying to hate the game. That's not my objective. I, do, I don't want to play a playthrough that is going to cause me to just absolutely hate the game because the game was designed to be used with vehicles and the game is not going to be fun at all with vehicles. And while I do enjoy a challenge, I like artistic challenge. I like challenge where this was an intended thing within the game and as a result it's difficult but there's like a uh, an artfulness to it and it's like that's why I don't want to do like a lot of the really wacky challenges because it's like even if I do it and let's say I succeed it's going to just burn me out of the game to such an extent that I'll, I'll just hate the game. Yeah, I mean, like I said, that's been a request. Like, people want me to play, like, without a vehicle or something. Two minutes. This is it. Send your siege or you're dead. Two minutes. You got two minutes, Playguard. Hellkin17, how's it going? But, yeah, that's, that's, it's like, basically, um... Like, people ask, like, like, I don't play State of Decay except when I'm streaming anymore. And the reason for that is because the game doesn't evolve, the game doesn't change. It's just the same game over and over and over again. And the way I protected myself from burnout, like, the way that I make playing State of Decay sustainable so that I don't burn out of the game is I only play the game when I am creating content, because then it gives me plenty of rest, plenty of time away, because, like I said, Undead Labs, their updates, they don't make the game more fun. They don't change the game in a meaningful way. Like, I, I could stop playing the game for two years, come back, and just wait, wow, okay, it's the same game, basically, and so that's how I... That's how I managed the level... That's how I managed the burnout with State of Decay. Thomas asks, have you had two large meteors in one mission in Deep Rock Galactic before? From time to time. It's not very common. Uh, the most common it'll happen is if you are doing a mission with a level 3 game length. Because there is a 35% of a meteor event in a length level 3 mission. Okay, looks like there's no siege. The two minutes are up. Would I say that Undead Labs is focusing on quality of life? No, I wouldn't say that. Because the infestation update isn't quality of life. The um, the plague territory isn't quality of life. The, um, the forever communities isn't quality of life. I think the issue is that, I, I literally think the issue is that Undead Labs just doesn't understand, I don't think they understand what the game needs. Well, Scent block on. And let me show you how, uh, how easy it is to, to kill a Plague Art with some bloater gas and a pyro launcher. All we gotta do, throw. Just first, just look around you, make sure they're not on you. Throw. Now we got. Don't fire directly at the play guard. Fire away. Second one. There it goes. Dead. That is one mega dead play guard. Now that is on, uh, and that is on lethal zone, as you can see. Normally it would take three. That means something else damaged it. Normally it would take three throws, but there you go. Nothing to it. Looks like we got uh, samples, backpack, bell club, a police knife, Kodiak, and uh, fuel bombs. Now we get to the real work of rebuilding. I have a few ideas on that topic. I believe that is part of. Well, we know that Jeff Strain isn't around. 
So Blood Cop says the original creators of the game probably aren't around. Uh, one thing we know for sure is that the guy who created Undead Labs, his name is Jeff Strain. Jeff Strain is the founder, and he, he sold the company. Uh, Jeff Strain was a important part of the company, too, because Jeff Strain was formerly a senior Blizzard developer that worked on... He was a senior developer for Diablo, which is one of Blizzard's, like, big, big games. So, like, the loss of their original leader, in other words, the guiding vision of the game, he sold the game. And although Microsoft did appoint somebody new to lead Undead Labs, the guy they appointed, I looked at the games that he has worked on, and none of the games he's worked on are zombie games, survival games, or simulation games. That'll keep us a little while. So, now that the play guard is dead, um, let, we, we got a few minutes remaining. Let's see how long it takes for those infestations to disappear. Because the rule of the, the new rule is that when a play guard dies, any of the infestations that it created will not immediately vanish, but eventually they will vanish. But you know, basically, like, uh, to, to, I, I will explain, like, why, why am I interested in distancing myself from State of Decay? I, I'm in... It's kind of... It's a very technical thing, because I would like to separate State of Decay from Undead Labs. I think State of Decay is a really good idea. What is State of Decay? It's a game that, in a zombie apocalypse, you have to band with other humans, manage their needs create a community designed to survive in a post-apocalyptic world where you just have to learn to deal with the zombies and what your engagements with oh, other communities that are simulating the same thing are doing. That's a really good idea. That's a fantastic idea. There's a reason why State of Decay has a fan base to begin with. It's, it's a good idea. My problem is not with State of Decay. My problem is with Undead Labs. My problem is that I have lost my confidence in Undead Labs and why is that important? Well, like I said, I'm a professional content creator. I make my money entertaining people primarily on State of Decay. And what I see is a bleak future for myself. I see myself trapped playing this game that is not getting more popular, that is being mis misled by Undead Labs, a game that is not showing signs of growth. So. And because I'm directly linked to State of Decay, and I'm linked to Undead Labs, like, the more popular State of Decay is, the better I do. And the reverse is also true. The more content I make, the more free advertising I give to Undead Labs. That's the symbiotic relationship between content creator and video game developer. And what I see is a dark, bleak future for myself. I see a future where... I, I basically have just enough to survive. Like, I don't see a future where I'm growing and that, like, I'm able to make my dreams come true in partnership with the game and the company. And what that and that's the reason why I mentioned um, Brian Menard. About two to three years ago, Brian Menard identified the same problem, that he realized that he was financially linked to Undead Lambs, and what he needed to do was cut the umbilical cord with state of decay and develop an audience that was willing to watch more than just state of decay so that he could play state of decay when he feels like it but he didn't feel forced to play state of decay that's the situation i'm in right now now i agreed with him those two to three years ago but the difference was that he made an active effort to change it where i did not and that was the mis that was my mistake i i brian was right that you needed to, he, we needed to distance ourselves from State of Decay and not be reliant on State of Decay. Like, he, he was right, uh, and I, I was afraid to do it. I agreed with him, but I was, I was afraid 
to let go of my position. I, I, I was afraid to let go of being the biggest State of Decay content creator. I was afraid to let go of what I had. I didn't want to be set back to, like, 2019 or 2020 when I only had, like, 10,000 subs. Uh, I was thinking too much from a fear perspective, and I didn't realize that the long-term decision is to develop a fandom that is, like centered around the content creator rather than centered around the game and that's why uh, if you look at Brian now he's doing very well Brian is doing fantastically he's up to 70,000 subs and that's because he detached himself from State of Decay he plays it when he feels like it but he's no longer boxed into doing it and that was the mistake I made so that is um, that is kind of where I'm standing right now, and it is a bit scary. I've already been working on it. You'll notice that I'm not making a lot of State of Decay content on YouTube. That has definitely harmed me. I, I'm probably making about 50 to 60 percent of what I previously was. But now that I've seen the damage it's doing, I'm kind of like, you know what? It doesn't feel good, but I can deal with it. Like, you know, like, like, I'm not out of business. I could deal with it. I will have to work on installing myself in a new fandom. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But that's what I want to do. And the truth is I'm just not happy playing State of Decay anymore. And I'm not happy playing it anymore because it just isn't growing. Like, the game, it's not going anywhere. And it's Undead Lab's fault. It's not State of Decay's fault. I want to make that clear. It's not State of Decay's fault. State of Decay is a good idea. The problem is that Undead Labs has bad ideas. Will I play State of Decay 3? Absolutely. I'll still play State of Decay 2. I want to be more like Brian Menard, where when a new update comes out, I'm like, oh, okay, let's go check out this new update. Rather than, like, playing the game, like, literally every single day, day in, day out, etc. That's what I would like to do. And um, I've got some ideas of what I'd like to jump off onto. I'm taking a very hard look at Deep Rock Galactic because Deep Rock Galactic has a similar size community. The community of Deep Rock is comparable to State of Decay, but Deep Rock is showing great signs of growth. Like, the fan base loves Deep Rock. They love their developers' ghost ship games. Uh, apparently, they've tripled their audience in the last year. And there also aren't very many content creators for Deep Rock. There's only, like, three content creators. So, like, there is there is room for more, basically. So I'm giving that a hard thought. Another one is MechWarrior 5. MechWarrior 5 is a bit less popular than State of Decay 2, but nobody is making content for it. It's, it I look at it and I almost see free real estate because nobody is making content for that game. And the Wikipedia page for MechWarrior 4, 5 is garbage. The wiki page sucks. And that's good for me because if the wiki page is garbage, that means people are in the dark and they're confused. And it means they need someone to teach them how to play. And so that's very attractive there. Another game I'm very interested in is coming out later this year called Infection Free Zone. It's a very interesting looking zombie game where the game designers are... They are using like Google Maps or something. They're using some kind of like um, GPS map system so that the battlefields, the game world that you're in, is literally real life. Like, apparently, if I understand it correctly, you could find your city, your real city, and all of the buildings would be there from real life, but represented in the game. So you could potentially be literally defending your own hometown from a zombie apocalypse. You, maybe you could even find your literal own house in the game and start at that house and literally defend your own neighborhood. I don't know if it works to that extent, but that's what they're kind of selling it as. And I'm like, that sounds really awesome. And, um, you know, yes, yeah, Sons of the Forest. I definitely have interest in um, Sons of the Forest. What are you guys saying? Don't dox myself. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if I have to use my own information, I, I'll do that. Um, let me see. What are you guys saying? Somebody said something about Mech Warrior. 
Yes, the only content for uh, MechWarrior is Baraduel, and that's fine because, like, Baraduel, for the most part, like 99% of his content is MechWarrior online. Very little of it is MechWarrior 5 focused, and so, like, uh, yeah, like, I absolutely, I, I don't see any competition for MechWarrior 5. And even though it's not as popular as State of Decay, it's not terribly less popular, but the fact is that no one is competing. Like I said, it's like free real estate. Yes, Sons of the Forest looks really good. I do want to play that. Uh, I don't know if I will want to make guides, because basically, in order to build a really strong fandom, um, I have to make some guide videos. Guide videos really endear you as a content, because like basically, if you help other people first, then people will come and help you in return. Like if you teach people how to play and you guide them true, then they will become fans of yours because you you did them a solid. So like any game that I really migrate into, I will have to consider making a good. 10, 20, maybe 30 guides for in order to first serve other people and give them a reason to care who I am before they're, before they're willing to watch me. I don't expect anyone to just watch my content because streamers are a dime a dozen, but not everyone is willing to make guides, not everyone is willing to make reviews, and uh, that's what I'm probably going to do. And that, that's why I've reduced my streaming quantity. I've reduced it to kind of like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because I need more open days for creating guides. It's very stressful, though. It's a lot of work, and I haven't been able to do it. But, like I said, if I pull the plug on State of Decay, I will be. it will damage me. It already is damaging me financially, but I understood that. I, I accepted that that would just be the way it is. I'm basically reversing the clock to, say, 2020. Back when I had, like, 15,000 subs. I, it doesn't feel good. Obviously not. But I understand that it's necessary. Like, that's just the way it has to be. But there we go. That Those are my thoughts on the... Um, yes, guides also help you solidify. Basically, if you can teach other people correctly, then you yourself... Also, in the process of teaching people, you learn your own weaknesses because people will ask you questions well what about x or what about y or what about z and maybe you don't know the answer so you gotta go you gotta go research it but that's what i'm gonna do like i said i don't know uh, you will know by the end of uh, by the beginning of this week you will know by sunday what i decided to do i might just continue playing state of decay um, I might get out of the beta because I like I, said, I absolutely detest the update. I may get out of the beta and just play the game because like I said, it does help me a lot financially. So I may just play like and I'll just kind of like la di da da da, just play kind of play the game. You know, just like oh, I'll just keep playing because like I said, as long as I have you guys to talk to, that makes it a lot better. And as long as I don't have to deal with these like god-awful infestations it makes the game like the god-awful infestations just kill the game for me because i can't talk with you guys it's just constantly rush 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 stomp out all the play guards just go 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 and uh i can't really concentrate on having fun with you guys because it puts so much the pressure on you have gone critical it Maybe puts so much pressure on siege. speed running the game that it just it just sucks all the fun out of it and and I just I just don't want to do it. So you will know what I think about it. I, I might even do maybe I'll play Heartland. Maybe I maybe I I might just need a palate cleanser. Maybe I'll play Heartland. Maybe I'll just play something literally just for fun, like Heartland. Maybe I'll play State of Decay One. Who knows? But like I just I need a palate cleanser, at least a palate cleanser from this because I cannot describe how much I just detest this update. And like I said, I, I haven't been happy with Undead Labs uh, basically for the entirety of State of Decay 2. Really, there are very few times where I said, you know what, great job Undead Labs, that was a brilliant idea. Uh, I have historically been opposed to Undead Labs decision making, mainly because Undead Labs thinks that what the game needs is cosmetics. The bounty broker, the maps, the maps are essentially gigantic cosmetics. And so, for the past three going on four years, all they've done are cosmetics. Cosmetics, cosmetics, and that the game doesn't need that. Uh, what the game, what does the game need? The game needs new zombies, new facilities, new skills, new things to play with. New weapons, and I don't mean like another gun, I mean like a new classification of guns, like maybe a flamethrower, 
RPGs. If you're going to add an infestation system, it needs a system like you go to town and there's like blood plague matter and you need to take a flamethrower out and you need to start burning down buildings, torching buildings to clean up the infestation. Uh, you need to find like hardened plague masses and you plant like bombs on them to blow them apart and it destroys the infestation level on the city and then when you clear it the city is like rich with badass loot that's the stuff that the game needs it doesn't need cosmetics it doesn't need maps it needs stuff that deepen the game not widen the game that's all undead labs does they just want the game state of decay 2 the way to describe it is it's a mile wide but it's an inch deep and that's the reason why Seven Days to Die, although way Seven Days to Die was way less popular than State of Decay, now Seven Days to Die is surpassing State of Decay because Seven Days to Die consistently focuses on deepening the game. Project Zomboid, for most of its existence, has been less popular than State of Decay, but now Project Zomboid is more popular than State of Decay by multiple times. It's probably about three to four times more popular for the last year than State of Decay because they focus on updates that deepen the game. Those are the updates that impress people and keep people playing and get people playing. Those are the updates that impress people and say, wow, I like this game. I'm going to tell my friend to get it. And then his friend likes it and his friend says, I'm going to tell my friend to get it. And then the game spreads like a disease through people telling other people to play it because that's what happens when a game is good. We'll see, though. Anyways... I am going to take a brief recess before um, the next stream. I'll be playing uh, Seven Days to Die. This is the end of this playthrough. I'm not going to do a legacy. I think we can all agree the legacies are boring and uninteresting. I've done them so many times. I, I Personally, I feel killing all the play guards is basically beating the game. So, um, I believe... The last episode of Agility for Seven Days to Die is coming up, which does include a final showdown with the chat. Uh, if you attend the Seven Days to Die, you are going to get 30 minutes to kill me. If you can kill me in the last 30 minutes, then uh, you know you guys win the showdown. I do it whenever I complete the playthrough. The final day of the week of the, the last stream of me completing the objective is the, the showdown with the Twitch chat. You guys will get infinite points. You're going to get or get like 10,000 points to try to kill me. You guys will be able to summon all the zombies you want and or try to stop them. You can help me. And so that'll be the final showdown. But anyways, that is going to be that. Remember, if you want to see any of the other episodes, go to the VODs channel. That's where all of the episodes are. Uh, join the Fox Republic. We do have a, what do you call it, daybreak team. The Daybreak team can help you uh, get some Daybreak victories in. Also, like keep in mind, you know, if the Daybreak team helps you get a few wins in, it would be nice if you return the favor and help a few other novice players get a win in or two. You don't have to do it equally. Like if they help you with ten games, help somebody with like two or three. Like have like by by creating a community with a sense of honor and sacrifice. I think that's how we create the badass community where everyone tries to lift each other up a bit. And like I said, you don't have to go the same distance as some people. But you know, like if somebody gives you a hand, give someone else a hand back in the Fox Republic. Anyways, that is the end for this week's uh, State of Decay streams. You will know either Saturday or Sunday what I plan to do from here. But, um, yeah. Follow me on Twitch if you want to know when I go live next. Stay tuned in a good, um, well, actually pretty soon, in a good five to ten minutes. I'll be on Seven Days to Die. But, of course, at the end of the day, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.